Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale and in this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to make some delicious cheeseburger sliders. You can absolutely make this recipe on your Blackstone or if you have a big griddle outside, you can make this recipe right on it. It is absolutely divine. I find that kids really love it. If you love a cheeseburger, you will love this recipe. It's very easy, but you can also make it indoor. So if it's in the middle of winter, or if it's a hundred some degrees like it is in Jersey these days and you just don't want to light up that big grill if you want to make a few uh, and well in this case we're making 12 but they are really small <laughs> you can just do it inside and it's fabulous so let me run you through the list of ingredients they are so good if you love I am a thin burger kind of gal I am not a big fan of really thick juicy burgers it's just not my thing I prefer a thin burger um, lots of onions lots of American cheese yes I said American do not come for me it's just what I prefer on a cheeseburger some of the best chefs I've ever met some of the best chefs I've, chefs I've ever cooked with all have one thing in common they all love American cheese on their burger so it's just classic okay I have my cast iron skillet here which is a little bit of olive oil just to get everything going and I'm adding some ground beef this is just a tiny bit over a pound but a pound is fine break it up as much as you can I like to do this and kind of leave it in a layer like this so that there are some you see how there are pockets of open surface area there what happens is those little pockets of open surfaces allows the meat to caramelize in the places that it's touching the skillet rather than steaming rather than giving it no spots for the steam to escape it just works just hear me out it works do it like that leave it untouched for a couple minutes and then you start stirring it while that happens i'm gonna go ahead and dice an onion i like onions in my cheese on my cheeseburgers or my cheese steaks so i always add an onion you don't have to what i also have here is some compound butter that i make myself if you don't have compound butter all you need is a few tablespoons of unsalted butter some chopped garlic some chopped parsley and a little italian seasoning and that's done i always have it in the fridge because i can saute anything in that and it will give it phenomenal flavor I also have a little bit of cream cheese and then I know what you're thinking why because I need a little bit of what I call edible glue to hold the meat together so that when I put it on my Hawaiian rolls it kind of holds better it doesn't slide all over the place if that makes sense I've got my oven preheating to 350 all I'm gonna do is dice up this onion keep my eye on the beef and then we move on to the next step Okay, my beef is about halfway cooked, but I want you to see how much fat it is rendering. I don't want all that. I don't want it. I don't need it. I'm going to take some of it away. And the easiest way to do it is to just take all of your meat, push it towards one side of the skillet, and then just very carefully with the heat turned as low as it goes, just tilt it. And then all of that fat will sort of lean towards one side and you want to leave behind just a tablespoon because then that's plenty to cook the beef and now that we're going to add the onions I'm just turning the heat back up because I lowered it uh, and now that we're going to add the onions there's plenty of fat in there to cook the onions I love fat I love flavor but I don't like an excessive amount just because especially with rendered fat from protein it has a completely different flavor and texture to uh, you know and, and texture in my mouth than say olive oil right so just my two cents do you care about that maybe not but i just thought it was a nice tip to share <laughs> tilt your pan ladle out the fat adding the onion i'm just going to go ahead and saute all of this together until the beef has cooked all the way through and while that's happening i'm also going to add some seasoning of your choice just in any all-purpose seasoning I like to make my own you can use a steak seasoning anything you want try and buy one that's salt free because they tend to be mostly salt very little flavor and I'm the opposite kind of a gal I like all flavor and then control my salt <laughs> while this is cooking I don't really have to do anything so I'm just gonna slice up my bread um, which I just take a pack of Hawaiian rolls take them out of the cardboard here and then just slice them 
down the middle all in one go as best you can. That looks fantastic. I'm going to turn it off from the heat. Mmm. So good. Wow. Your cream cheese. Mmm. It just helps hold everything together. I don't need to turn the heat back on. I'm just going to let the residual heat help me kind of melt this in place. It's not much. It's only about a quarter of a cup. But it's just enough to do the job it needs to do. I like to take a little bit of my melted garlicky compound butter and put it at the bottom of half of my cut rolls. If you wanted to, this is totally optional. It really does have to do, it depends on the person um, making these or whoever you're serving them to or what you like. You can do a layer of mayo if you wanted to. You could do a layer of ketchup if you wanted to. It's totally up to you. I like to do two layers of cheese because I think the more cheese, the better in this case. I don't always think that, but I do think that in this case, especially because it tends to hold everything together so nicely. Then you take your beef mixture, pop that right on, one single layer, a bit more cheese. You can do half the amount if you wanted to. You could do one of these. It's completely up to you. Okay. And then you just put the top on. If anything spills, it's fine. It's fine. We're not taking it super serious. We know it's going to be delicious. So we're not really worried. Okay. And then we're going to take some Worcestershire, Worcestershire, add it to the compound butter that's melted. And then you're just gonna brush this all over the top. Hey, yo, get up there. And if you fancy, I love to sprinkle everything but the bagel on top because it has dehydrated onion and garlic and sesame. It's just flavor and it's texture. And you know me, I think balance is about texture, not just flavor. Okay, and then you're gonna cover these. And you're gonna bake them for 10 minutes. Nope. 15 minutes covered, 10 minutes uncovered. So can I just can I just get this out? That'd be great. That would be phenomenal. Okay. I'm gonna cover them, pop them in for 15 minutes, and then take the foil off and pop them back in for another 10. Look how phenomenal these look. These look. I'm just gonna have to do one of these because I am afraid that it's gonna take everything with it. Oh, they smell insane. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, it's so hot. So hot. Hold on. Some came out. Okay. Serve these just like this and it would be delicious. But you know what's even cuter? Is if you take like a little, well, I do pickle on top. Do a little pickle situation, a little lettuce situation, a little tomato situation, like that. Tell me that's not the cutest thing ever. And it would be so, look at it. It would be so perfect for a party. I mean, it's just so easy. I like the little, I like a little red onion on mine as well. Put them in these little containers and you have like the cutest little, the cutest little cheeseburger slider you've ever seen or I've ever seen. I'm gonna take that skewer out because I'm gonna attempt. They're very hot, let them cool. Very hot. Oh my goodness. Oh! Insane. Mm hmm. That may be better than any burger you're going to make this summer. I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. Divine. 
Go to laurainthekitchen.com for the written recipe. Divine. You need to make them. Hope you enjoy spending time with me. I will see you in the next one. Oh!